from this moment on, from like today on, I am going to be the best version of myself I can possibly be. I am going to do everything, everything, everything I possibly can to make my mom proud. And nothing's going to stop me. And I'm going to be the best version of myself. It's a first for many. I like to be that guy. A first for many guy. I don't know. Welcome back to the Rose Podcast, episode 16. Banner right there. Absolutely amazing to have you on. I'm not going to intro our guest quite yet because we're going to keep it a mystery for you for like the next 30 seconds. Okay. How's your day going though? I'm good, man. I'm excited to be here. This good. Is sweet. Good. Yeah. It's awesome. And, and not to mention, we have an audience member, a single audience member, <laughs> yeah. Sophia, here in the audience who is here with our lovely guest. Our guest today is a photographer. He's here to capture every moment through a lens. He is making connections with only seven seconds his name is Mario A. Gonzalez. Everyone, a round of applause. <laughs> Woo! We're switching it up. Yeah. We're switching it up. So it's nice. It's nice that you're like already here. Mm-hmm. Nice, dude. Welcome on to episode 16 of the Realist Podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Again, yeah. banner right there. Yeah. Having a great day. Yeah. Weather's weather's all right. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of cloudy out. I know. Um, I, I just came from a shoot, so I literally like got home and like <laughs> Downloaded all the all the pictures and like wow. sent it off and um, came here. So it was great for pictures. Yeah, dude. Um, again, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah. We're gonna wrap the thank episode you. there. I mean, we've already got everything that we right. <laughs> yeah, the, seven seconds, right? Seven second uh, podcast. Only seven that'd be, seconds. That'd be an interesting yeah. thing, like the seven second podcast. Yeah. How was I, your shoot, by the way? Uh, it was great. Yeah, an old friend needed some headshots. So, okay, nice. Um, what are you dabbling when it comes to f- photography? Everything. Everything. I, I headshots, love, yeah. landscape, headshots, landscape portraits. Landscapes. Like everything, everything I can possibly do, I will do it. Um, I mean, there's like some things that I prefer not to, right? Sure. Like, like families and like pin up. <laughs> do you do pinups at all? Um, no. Little, little different realm. Yeah, a little different realm. Um, do I do a lot of senior photos like that. Like if I were to be like, "Hey, Mario, I'm a senior in high school. Are you down to do some photos? Oh, you know, I'll pay you sure, whatever your sure. rate is. Yeah. Is that that's you would do senior photos. Yeah. I would just do like solos, senior pictures, and like anything portrait, creative, okay. wedding, um, weddings, um, here and there, here and there. Not yeah. really like I've I've done a lot of videography with yeah, weddings okay, instead of okay. pictures with makes weddings. more sense. Yeah, it's a lot. I prefer it way more, um, just because weddings are you have to deal. Yeah, with. Yeah, there's so much like, chaos. There's a lot of things going on. It's not like yeah. standing still. Let's take a photo all the time. <laughs> It's yeah. like, you don't want like the, the, I feel like the nervousness of like getting the shot for, you know, the couple that's getting yeah. married. You I know? mean, I mean with video, you have like, you still have that like yeah. pressure of yeah. getting one shot, but it's not like, it's not like you, you can, you can just take a frame out yeah. of the, yeah. the video, right? Yeah. So. You can morph it however you want. Whereas yeah. a photo is a single frame. Yeah. So it's like, even if like the slightest part is out of, out of focus. Yeah. It, it's like, it uh, can it can be it can be tough. So I'm sure you got good cameras that it's it's not bad. Yeah, I uh, thankfully I've invested a lot. Yeah. in my equipment, but because um, how long have you been doing that? So, I've been doing photography uh, professionally like two three years. Okay, and then like photography on its own, I've been doing it for like six years. Wow, what got you into that? Since you've been doing it since you're twenty, right? Um, yeah, I'm twenty. Okay, so like so, yeah, right as you got into high school yeah um just someone gave me like i bought like a 20 dollar like point and shoot sure um and that just kind of like led into me wanting to just take pictures of everything sure and then like i got an iphone that was like amazing with the camera and, at the like, time at and the time yeah. it was like it, <laughs> yeah. was, it was great so i have like old pictures of like my iphone pictures um and it yeah, and then it just kind of took it. It like I took a break a little bit, and like sure, just because I was involved in school a lot. Yeah. Um, but then, like, came around college again, and like, or like, junior year, senior year, I was like, yeah. I had a camera, and like, it was my first time using a DSLR. And sure. I was like, 
I'm going to do this. Thing. Yeah. And that's, that was the spark that, that transcended what you do today, you know, with not only your photography work, but your videography work. Mm-hmm. And so when you're reinvesting, you know, into your company, into your, you know, your business, what yeah. you do, what are you buying? Like, are you buying lenses? Are you buying just accessories? Are you buying location? Like, do you even, you know, like location stuff? Um, you know, setting up that. Yeah. I, I mean, most yeah. most of the time, locations aren't hard to yeah, yeah, get. Yeah. You know, most of them are free, but... Um, for the most part, I'm buying, like... So, the, the hardest part is, like, just getting that first camera. Sure. Once you have that first camera, like, the lenses are the thing that come next. Yeah. So, for, for, for me, it was, like... I had a camera, but then I upgraded yeah. to a better camera, and I just needed to buy better lenses. And which makes sense. A lot of people like that look at photography. They're like, like it's just a camera that can do most of the work. Yeah, but uh, it's the lenses. The lenses are like the main thing. That lenses, even like a little bit of filter, like yeah. that you might put on it. Yeah, sometimes. Um, just. Uh, Buying those lenses are very expensive. Yeah. So a lot of what went back into my business is like buying those lenses and buying. Uh, I have to pay for like programs. Like yeah, I had to pay for like um, Adobe yeah, Photoshop your creative crop. and like yeah. all of that. Like all of the Adobe suite. Yeah, um, your Creative Cloud thing. That's just. I mean, yeah. as a student, luckily it is twenty dollars. If not, it's yeah, 60. yeah, it's so, so much money. It's 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 nice as if you're a student. And then not to only mention, you know, like even if you, just your normal expenses, gas, mm-hmm. you know, in your car. Yeah. If, you know, if you have any problems with your car, that that as well. Maybe insurance if you pay for that, your phone bill. Yeah, yeah. So, like. So, it's like, it's so many things yeah. that I. Beyond just the beyond just creative like, thing. Yeah, yeah. So, it's uh, a lot of it, too. It's like, it's like the, I don't know how to describe it. It's like the, the least, like exciting part about yeah yeah photography is like the storage like just like keeping i i mean i i think you would you would understand like (laughs) as a video guy like yeah like keeping all that storage and paying for storage is so expensive well especially if you buy like a two terabyte thing and it's two hundred dollars and then you have to like only have it from like this date to that date or like certain things that you have on there that you wrote on the little little what i don't even know what it's made out of but just writing like hey here's this yeah like you you know casey neistat right yeah yeah Bro, oh. his entire workshop and like watching his storages look like bookshelves. It's super, <laughs> it's super cool to see that. Yeah. But it's like, you know how much work <laughs> that takes. Yeah. And to fill that all yeah, up. It's funny. It's funny you bring up Casey Neistat because like Casey Neistat yeah. is a big inspiration. Okay. Like he's the reason I do video. Like, okay. It's the only reason that I ever started like recording video is because of Casey Neistat. It's interesting because he was the same reason I got into vlogging. What? Yes, because he, his vlog craze back in 2016. It was sick. Dude, so it was sick. the thing. Everyone watched it. So sick. He was the one guy that uh, basically created vlogging mm-hmm. as a mainstream commercial thing beyond it's, just like your, hey, welcome to Disneyland. He's kind of like what changed like the YouTuber. He molded like, the YouTuber. Yeah. Like he molded that scene. It's so insane. And so for you to say that. That he was the reason that you got into videography, mm-hmm. not only as like a hobby, but then a, as a business. As a business, yeah. It's, it's the same exact same thing for me, just in a different route. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, it's it's super cool. Um, so like if you go to like my videos, yeah, a lot of them, a lot of those drone shots are inspired by Casey Neistat. Dude, how could you not? Like, like it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, and like for him to do it in New York City, yeah, like super cool. Yeah, well, like I'm. I don't think if Casey did this in the middle of Nebraska, I, I, I like <laughs> some part of me says like, bro, that's like boring, yeah. but it's Casey Neistat. It's like Casey I, Neistat. I could imagine the vision that he had. He could make that into anything that he wanted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's, he's the reason I started um, doing video and okay. I, like I fell in love with it. But yeah. then again, like go, going back to your question, like having that storage, Paying for that storage, yeah. it's like, oh, <laughs> it, it hurts. When, I'm not going to lie. You probably <laughs> use like 10x normally what I would use. Like I brought my terab- like two terabyte uh, le- starts with an L. It's like mm. store- it's, it has like an orange cover. Oh, lacy? That's it. Mm. So I bought that like last year during like October, November. Mm. I haven't filled it up yet. Probably oh. filled up half of it. 
Whereas you're probably like buying like one a month just for like. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I I have like I have four four two terabytes. I have two two terabytes. Like I have one. <laughs> I, like I have so <laughs> many things, um, and like all of those have to be organized, named. Yeah, like everything has to be there. What's that process like? Like <sighs> especially with the organization, I can imagine. Is it yeah. just time dated, like from September twenty twenty one to December twenty twenty one? Yeah, um, just hoping you remember when you did it. So, um, I lost four terabytes of like my work, <laughs> like my initial work. Yeah, all of that crashed like last year oh my god <laughs> so the the hard drive that i had yeah is completely gone like it it crashed <laughs> i i could never get those pictures again oh um when it's like hard like how do you expect like the backup is putting it on the hard drive yeah so my backup my yeah. main backup completely died oh god <laughs> yeah it was it was a very sad moment for me and then i bought another four terabyte and it was like that's gonna be my backup and that one right now is having issues. Like, I haven't been able to access that backup in a really long time. Wow. So, like, I mean, I've even, like, it's, like, just sitting in just, my room. <laughs> just there. And I, like, I don't want to touch it because I know that it's, like, it's kind of faulty. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. That's tough. That's so tough because it's, like, like, think about it. You know when your parents have, like, a, a VHS, you know, yeah. like a tape, and it's like, or like a little camcorder, like thing that like looks like a like a SD card. Mm-hmm. Plug it in, you watch them, or like CDs of you as you know in your youth, yeah. or even like them is in their youth, you know, transferred and burned over. It's like, yeah, like especially VHS. The more you watch it, the less you could watch it. Yeah. It's so insane to <laughs> think about. That's so right? crazy to think about. Right? Wow. Um, I just recently started like shooting on film and yeah. like old cameras. Okay. Um, and it's so cool because like I wish I was like doing that earlier sure. in my life. Yeah. But I was just like, I was too busy. Like, well, especially digital is like stuff. the way yeah. you know. Yeah. So when you get back into film, like, is that just another creative spark for you? Mm-hmm. Like a new area that you can kind of not transform yourself in, but to to experiment in. Yeah. Um, I was just telling this to one of my old, old friends, Travis. Um, like I literally just saw him for the first time in like yeah. two years. Okay. And uh, uh, I was telling him that doing video has made me a better photographer. Like yeah, as we as weird and as back like words. As yeah. It sounds, yeah. Um, it's because like every frame of the video, like if you stop that video. That that frame should be a beautiful picture, and like, but it just happens to be every second there's every 60 second frames, there's, thirty frames. Yes, so like, imagining it as like every time you pause that video, yeah, and if that video or that frame doesn't look great, like, then I'm not yeah. I'm not doing the best I can. Yeah, so it's made me a better photographer like that. Where okay, when I'm behind a camera and I'm shooting yeah. something, and I like picture it as a movie frame. I yeah. can shoot a hundred percent, a hundred times better. Like wow, that's it. That's a that's a not not an interest. It's like an amazing way to look at it. Mm-hmm. You know, you pause a single video, that frame that you paused on should encapsulate something. Yeah, it should you know? tell a story. Yeah. So, um, like, video is so much about storytelling. Yeah. And like, the best pictures in the world are the ones that can tell you a story. So. When you take a picture, that picture should be able to tell a story. And, like, I I just, like, I, I, I want to chase that. And yeah. I want to, like, grab it and, like, just want to be good at that. You want to um, have that best photo. Yeah. It's funny you mentioned this because I wanted to ask you this. <laughs> what do you think the best photo ever taken is? Whoa, man. Because you probably have, a, like, a lar- large catalog of not only your photos, but photos that you've seen and been inspired by. Because I think I know what one of the best photos ever taken is. Hmm. This might give you a little bit of inspiration when okay. you think on it. Yeah. Because for me, I remember this Nat Geo, like, photo. You know the 112-year cover of the girl with the blue eyes? Mm-hmm. Bro, oh. That photo, to me, is the best photo ever taken. Wow. It's kind of nuts. 
Yeah. It's an interesting photo. If For those that don't know, I'm going to pop it. Actually, I'm just going to crop it onto the banner here. Episode 16, Blue Eyed Girl right there. Yeah. Now it's gone. <laughs> yeah, that's a sick. That's Yeah, that photo to me, bro, it just blows me away because not only it kind of, to me, like you said, tells a story, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And, like, you might have to read a little bit to kind of learn, but it's just, like, glorified in a way that is, is so unique. Yeah. Um, thinking about, like, the best picture, there's a lot of pictures that were taken in – like New York City. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you know the picture of all of the the workers. During uh, the pandemic? No, during oh. like, I, I forgot what building. Like what time zone? Uh, Like 1920s, maybe. Oh, okay. So like the, it's like. The stock market. It's, boom. It's, it's a really famous picture. It's where all of the, all of the workers are, are on a beam and they're okay. all eating lunch. Oh, yeah. They're on the crane up yeah, above. They're on the they're crane. On the beam. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's, that's one of. That's that, up there. That picture is amazing and then um i don't mean to get like kind of dark but no you're there's good. there's a there's a picture of uh, a man falling from, oh from the trade center from the when trade he's on center. the side yeah that picture is yeah i mean dude that tells so much you know you know like when they say like a picture says a thousand words that that says more than a thousand words like yeah it's insane that, that like gives you a feeling and, yeah like, um but there's so many pictures man yeah. it's but there's not a lot of pictures that can tell a story. Yeah. Um, and, and that's like, what you're trying to chase. That, that's, you're, yeah. You're not only in photos that tell a story, but even in video. In videos. In live yeah. photography, if you if you mm. may call it that. Yeah. So, like, I love street photography. Okay. I love it. Yeah. Um, Is it the lighting? Is it the composition that you can get afterwards? Is it? It's, it's those stories. It's that, yeah. like, I have, I just met this guy. His name's Moko. Okay. Uh, and he's from... I think he's from Mongolia, wow. and he's an amazing photographer, like absolutely incredible. I was just sh- I was showing Sophia yeah. some of his pictures, and yeah. I was like geeking out about him. Like, there's like a picture of um, a homeless man just yeah. like sitting against like a wall, and like the wall is blue, and he's like wearing a red shirt, and like he's like off to the left of the frame, and it's like all of those like that's that's like. That's an amazing picture. Yeah. But it also tells a story of, like, the the crisis yeah. in America of, like, yeah. homelessness and all that. So um, so when, you, when you're talking about, like, t- telling a story, there's always an intention behind it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I strive for that. Okay. I strive to be intentional. That's the goal. That's, yeah. 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 That, that's the goal. Um, but there's obviously like fun pictures yeah, where yeah, you, you know, know, like someone needs a senior picture yeah. or someone, and even those have kind of like a yeah story for them personally for as them well, personally. you know, and you're just the one that happened to capture it. Yes. So yeah, on my on my bio it says, uh, I think what God creates, I'm trying to capture. What God creates, I'm trying to capture. Is it weird that I know that? <laughs> No, th- no, th- this <laughs> it's good, right? Look, this good is, I, you've done your research. I've done my research. <laughs> but I, I also want to mention, this has been here the entire episode. I meant to mention this before we started. I thought this would be a really cool way to just kind of liven up the podcast. Okay. So it builds this tension. So this is going to sit here every time that we have a guest. And at any point in time, you can pop that. You can twist it and pull it. So anytime that you want, you can just like, like mid sentence, you could just grab it and boop, okay. whatever you want. I think it's a twist on the bottom. So, I mean, I'm just going to look at it. I won't. <laughs> he goes to go try it. And boop. <laughs> we have more, but you only get one opportunity. So I only get one shot. You only get this. one shot. Okay. Pressure's so you can, on. yeah, you can pull that whenever you want. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. Well, speaking about research, uh, funny enough, um, when I was in Chelan, I had gone to the Lakeview Drive-In, mm-hmm. and there were signs by the drive through that were the only seven seconds. And oh, I yeah. saw that. I was thought that was cool. You know, I was like wondering what, like, what it was, mm-hmm. you know. And I figured it was local, like in some facet. And then I remember when we were talking, and you had just like put out a few promos for the only seven seconds. Mm-hmm. And so I, what what is the idea behind that? Yeah, Um so only seven seconds is a nonprofit. Um, so the she she lives in um, Pateras, which is like a little bit outside of 
uh, Shalan. Okay. Um, and the whole premise and the whole idea of Only 7 Seconds is to have intentional connections with people. Um, the Only 7 Seconds part comes in when um, the co the, the founder, yeah. um, one of her, um, her his, uh, sorry, my mind. You're up. good, you're good. Um, her, she felt like um, his, her son wasn't being like reached out to. Oh, gotcha. Um, and so this this woman, she's a mother. Yeah, and uh, she she was like, "Why isn't anyone checking up on like my my son?" We'll say like Bradley, and uh, his name's Ethan. Actually, okay, we'll and call he, him Ethan. He, he's he's a great friend of mine. Yeah, and um, he like it, it was just like it, she got all like fired up, and she was like, "It only takes seven seconds to like reach out and yeah. make." Like Good. check up on talk. your friend yeah. and like be there for your friend. Like, and, and this is intentional is it doesn't matter who you are, mm-hmm. you know, like mm-hmm. even if we didn't know each other, yeah, it could be a person down the street, be your neighbor, mm-hmm. be your best friend, no matter yeah. what it, there's, is there a statistic behind that seven seconds or um, is that just like a phrase she th- said? Th- that was just a phrase that she said. Okay. She's like, it only takes seven seconds gotcha. to reach out and like reach out to your friend. Yeah. So that's where the only seven seconds comes gotcha. in. Gotcha. But the, the nonprofit is, is targeting people and telling them that, hey, it's like it only takes a little bit of your time yeah. to be intentional and connect with yeah. someone. So that can be like just like an old friend and being like, hey, like thinking about you, like yeah. how you've been. And like we, we what we want as a nonprofit and as this movement is for people to be less lonely Sure. Because yeah. Which, yeah. Which is in that bio yeah. of, of the Instagram page. Yeah. I'll leave a link in the description just so like any viewers can oh, actually listen to it. Yeah. And, and check out obviously your work on on their behalf mm-hmm. and, and just the message as a whole. Yeah. So it's uh, it's about being intentional and having those those um those connections yeah. because loneliness can it can lead to a lot of bad. It can build up. It yeah. can it can build up and like mental health comes behind it. Yeah. And, anxiety depression and uh, unfortunately suicide yeah and the ultimatum like we don't want people dying because, because they they weren't yeah. they weren't acknowledged they weren't yeah. like we're all humans we're all yeah. here together we're all here to be together yeah so why don't we come together and make intentional connections so, that's awesome that like yeah. when i first saw it like i was just like that's like interesting mm-hmm. you know like it only make seven seconds to make somebody smile, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Those random acts of kindness. Like, we learned a bunch of, like, in leadership of just, like, even, like, little things, you know? Like, mm-hmm. it doesn't have to take a lot of your time. Like, holding the door, like, I mean, yeah, it, it's the cliche, but, like, you know, for, like, an elderly person or a woman or, like, a, a, a family, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, somebody that you're, like, yeah. Come on in, you yeah. know. It's just like holding the door for them, you know. Yeah. This little random acts of kindness, you know. Um, I, I, I don't know why I can't think of any, but regardless, it, you know, like even even then, like those acknowledgement, I think is the is the grand scheme that I think of mm-hmm. when it comes to. Well, if you don't have that acknowledgement, it can lead down to that road of just like ah, uh, mm-hmm. like that loneliness that you talk about, yeah. and, and just building those connections, you know, it, just even verbally. You know, talking to somebody and asking them how their day is. Yeah, or even mm-hmm. smiling at someone. Yeah. Like, um, so we have, like, it's called Share Day. And okay. It's just, uh, so Share Day is stands for Spread Hope and Remind Everyone. Okay. So every yeah. seventh of, of the month, we, um, I go around and put sticky notes up. And yeah. Like, just, like, little encouragements, like, hey, like, you got this. Like, yeah. hey, don't give up. Uh, like, you're great. You're awesome. And, um just sticking them on random places. Yeah. Like, for example, I put them, like, I put them everywhere. So At I, the college? I live on campus. Yeah. So I just, I, like, I went out and um, made a video and, like, just to spread yeah. some awareness and, like, acknowledge that, I, um, yeah. that I'm doing it and stuff. Um, or, like, a reminder. Yeah. Um, you know, like, you know, like, especially at college, there's those little bulletin boards you're passing by. You're like, eh, that's cool. Like, dude, imagine... Just somebody seeing that. You have no idea who is impacted by those three simple words. Yeah. yeah. Of a little sticky note, of a little note, what any size, whatever it says, mm-hmm. is impacted by those words. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. It's amazing. So that's dude. Awesome on your part to Thank just you, like man. even take the time. I mean, yeah. it takes seven seconds. It, it, it takes a little bit of your time. Literally, yeah. It literally takes seven seconds to think of something and write it down. Yeah. And so, then, or even like sending a text. Yeah. Right. Like that's right at our disposal. Yeah. It's literally in our pockets. Yeah. Every day, every day. So dude, it's amazing. That's awesome. So on your, on your part, you're, you're obviously the, f- focusing on photography, videography, and obviously want to be a part of that, what you have actively. Mm -hmm. Are you doing a lot of the photography, videography stuff for that nonprofit? So I, uh, I'm officially there. Like I'm officially working for them and I'm their, um, video creator. Sure. Um, so I, I just like, I give them videos and reels and, um, just content for them to use. Um, thankfully my gifts line up and like i i'm able to use my gifts to help them yeah and i like this is something that i'm i I love and i'm passionate about so it's it's easy to do this and it's like i want to do this so that's great that's great and so especially with like that loneliness connection part Mm -hmm. you know we obviously went through a lull in our time last year where (laughs) things are so distant in, in any, every facet of our life, you know, not only socially distant, but like mentally distant from, you know, school, uh, you know, our jobs for a while. And, and so how did that impact you? How did, you know, time off for, or quote unquote time off? You may have not had any time off, you know, mm. um, how has that impacted you? It impacted me a lot, man. Um, Cause like I, I was in, I was like, it was my spring semester uh, of my freshman year okay. at Whitworth yeah. when COVID happened. Um, and, like, during COVID, during, like, those first few yeah. months, yeah. like, it was bad. Like, I was not in a great spot. Yeah. Um, and, like, it, it was just, I lost myself. I lost, like, who I was. Yeah. Like, you just get in this hole. Yeah. And um, I'm, I'm a very anxious person. Like, sure. I, I, I suffer with anxiety. Yeah. Um, but it's uh, it just got way worse. And, yeah. Um, thankfully, uh, her name's Gabby. She she would like she would just text me. Yeah. And be like, hey, like I hope you're doing well. Like I'm thinking about you. And like, it was at the it, it was at my worst moments when you just get a she, ring from her. When I would just get a ring from her. Wow. And literally, like, if it wasn't for her, I don't think I'd be alive, man. Like, wow, for real, like. And it's yeah. such a God thing. Like I, I'm, yeah. re- I'm religious. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. Yeah. And like, it's such a God thing for her to do that. Um, she wow. like obviously like, like it literally they, took they seven st- seconds of her time. It, yeah, and and it and it comes back to like why wow. I believe in only seven seconds so much. Wow. Because because you've seen it firsthand. I've seen it firsthand. I've yeah. seen what it like what yeah. those thoughts are, and I've yeah. like I've been in it, and. For someone to come into my life and remind me that I am loved is like is the reason why I stand behind only seven seconds so much. Wow. And like why I do the things I do. So Wow. And then a year later we're we're here. Yeah. You know? It's like it's so crazy. Dude, like, and like just to see how successful you've been oh, like over you. that even these last six to nine months of just even a year of just working, you know, I get to see your work, you know, yeah. and like everything that you share, dude, it's just a masterpiece, oh, you know, and it you, just man. continues to get better and better. Yeah. You know, like it, the same thing, you know, like you uh, on the end of, you know, the sticky notes that you, you go around and post on these bulletin boards, the bathroom, whatever, wherever you post them. Mm. Like you have no idea who the, that impacts, you know, yeah. like for me, when, like, I see your stuff, I'm like, bro, like, dude, like, how can I achieve that? You know, like, you literally have no idea that, like, you would have no idea if when I'm looking at your post, and I'm like, bro, like, I want to do that. Like, I'm saying that for real. Like, really? I look at your stuff, and I'm like, bro, like, <laughs> I want to, like, do, like, what you're doing. I want to do, you know, the similar things that you're doing, whether that be a certain visual shot, you know, mm. and just learning, like, bro, dude, that's like, a, that's, like, a really good shot. Like, how can I replicate that in my own you know, vlogs in my own way. Man, this is crazy. This is weird because, like, <laughs> I see what you're doing, and I'm like, that's dope. Because so, you yeah. you are you, and you don't care. 
Thank you. And like this whole thing, dude, <laughs> I wish I can do this. <laughs> I wish I was brave enough to like be behind a camera mm-hmm. and like be myself like you do because that's insane. Thank you. Man. I was I was telling Sophia, I was like he, he's 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 it. Like he's got it. Thank you, man. So and it, it takes a lot of time. It's really yeah. cool to hear that you look at my stuff. And it's weird because it's like our first time ever meeting yeah. too. So it's, it just makes this whole moment so much better. <laughs> and dude, like I just look at your stuff, bro, and I'm just like so inspired. Like, how can I incorporate that into my things? And I'm like, oh, maybe, dude, I should do more promo on my stuff, mm-hmm. you know? And just like, like I mean, a photo doesn't take that long to take, you know? Like you spend like three minutes taking like a certain photo that I can at least post on instagram for a promo for a video and Mm. dude it's just like those easy little things you know Mm. that you don't really think about you're like well like how can i market myself better and i look at your stuff and like you share your work you have a portfolio out there Mm. it's like oh like how do i at least like advance mine and take from people that i actually take from aka you and just a whole bunch of people in the space be like yeah dude i can do that you know Mm. like i'm just i'm just a guy behind not even behind the camera i'm a guy in front of the camera yeah you know but like how can i take what you're doing and apply that to my work, you know, and become well faceted mm. in, in that realm. You know, like I'm not a great photographer, but like I know how to take a photo, Yeah, yeah. you know, and like videography, cinema, I come from a cinematography background. So like mm. I understand a lot of these terminologies, the rack shots, you know, yeah, yeah. all that good stuff, blah, yeah. blah, blah. And so like, it's like, okay, I come from that field. How can I apply that to like what I do and make what I, the concept that I make special, mm. you know, and make it fun. You know, like I have a boisterous, you know, I like to say contagious, you know, like personality. Yeah, you do. So, dude. so it's like, how do I at least like incorporate that into this podcast, my videos, you know, and different things like that. I like to call it like the little Venn diagram, you know, like those Venn diagrams of two circles where they meet in the middle. <laughs> yeah. It's like what I'm good at, what my audience wants to see. That's where we meet in the middle. Okay. You know, so yeah. like I really like rip sticking. I like solving Rubik's Cubes. I like games. That's I like sick. different things like that. I like playing the piano. It's like, oh. well, I'm not going to make a whole v- video on playing the piano, you know? So like, yeah. how can I incorporate that into like little challenges for different things? And yeah, yeah. It's just like, it, that's what I think about all the time. It's like, yeah. how can I merge these two worlds of what I'm really good at and what my audience really wants to see? Oh. It's that little middle ground. Hmm. And then that's just been the content that I've been posting. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, it's, an, it's, it's a weird thing to talk about because I mean, you're in the creative space, so you probably understand a bit more than others. You know, like if you're really good at cinematography and that's like a field that you're really good at, how do you incorporate that into your videography, mm. you know, and making these really, I mean, dude, you're the one that you posted, I think last night and the night before oh, with the uh, girl, was, uh, that, was yeah. that you? That, that was her. Oh my God, <laughs> dude. I loved it. The three stack. I mean, like you're encapsulating all this different footage, but it just, dude, it looks so cool. And just like, bro, I'm just like, oh, I'm so in awe <laughs> by this aesthetic. Yeah. And especially downtown. I'm assuming you're at like a parking lot, right? Yeah. We yeah. were, we were like that. I think it's the uh, American Bank of America. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, I see a whole bunch of photos there. People yeah. in cars. <laughs> people, like, on the corner. Yeah, like yeah. A, it's really famous. Yeah, yeah dude. I mean, yeah. I, I shot with Bertha a lot yes, also. Yes, yeah. yes, So what's your what's your relationship like with Bert? How did you guys meet? <sighs> That's my dog. That's, <laughs> he's, yeah, he's great. Like I, He uh, loves talking about you, by the way. He does. Yeah. Really? Yes. Oh, uh, well, <laughs> he's great. He, I love that dude. Like, yeah. we met in high school. Well, we kind of, like, grew up together elementary okay. school but he kind of moved schools and yeah um i but then we we came back ag- again together when i moved back to chelan nice or i moved to chelan should yeah I say. because you i'm assuming you went to manson for your elementary yeah and yeah so there's like a little small town called yeah. manson and chelan yeah not too far apart yeah not too far apart but i went to manson for like until i was in seventh grade and then okay i moved uh i moved to chelan my seventh grade year um and I mean, like Bert. Bert was an athlete. Like he was just like, he was doing his own thing. Like you know, Bert. Like he yeah. he, he, he rides solo for the He's most. He's the guy. Part. Yeah, he yeah. So, um, it wasn't until like junior year of track where we, we really started getting close. And so uh, you did track. Is that what you're saying? I did track. Oh, okay. I did okay. track. Uh, I, did, <laughs> I wasn't. I was. I was not good at it. Like, but you did track. I did track. There's so a lot of balls to get out there. I did. I did the 100 meter the 200 meter like once okay um but i did long jump and had a boy picking um, the right events yeah yeah <laughs> and i and i threw shot put okay so okay you're, you're uh, yeah. well-rounded there yeah but i was like i was in soccer 
okay. for like two years, and then sure. I was like, I don't want to do freshman soccer. sophomore. Yeah. moved to track, and then I moved to track, and then my next year, I was in, I was like literally practicing for track. Yeah, and then I was like, and then one of my friends is like, you should do golf. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, bet <laughs> <And> I, <laughs> I'll do golf, <laughs> and I did golf, and dude, I love it. Like, yeah. golf is like. Where'd you guys practice at? Do you guys go to Golf Course Road up there? Yeah, or yeah. Did you go to yeah, okay. up the yeah. Golf Course Road? Yeah. I've, I've never been up to like Bear, ba- Bear Big Bear Mountain in the canyon there. I've never been it's up a there. Good that, golf course. Yeah, I've heard. I've heard. I've heard good things. Except um, you're either hitting uphill, downhill, or your ball's way off the edge. Yeah. So, <laughs> so um, but I loved it. I, but that's how I I met Bert yeah. like through track, and um, he's obviously a Christian, and like yeah. we met through FCA, and which is. Uh, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, okay. which is, okay. like, a little club that we had. Gotcha. Um, but, he, yeah, he goes to the same church. Yeah. Um, I mean, during football, we were close, but not very close. Did you play football as well? I played football. Okay. I played football for three years. Okay. Um, wow. And then my junior year, I got I got a major concussion. Like Sure. And that was, like, same fourth, to me. <laughs> that was fourth, fourth concussion. Like Oh, God. Yeah. I, they I, they I, pulled a plug there. I, I was, point. like, yeah, they were, like, you should really consider like, <laughs> like not cut. playing football. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, so it's your third season this is your fourth concussion. <laughs> yeah, so it's like it it was a uh, it it was heavy and yeah. like I fell into a, a hole during the whole sure like timeline. Yeah. yeah, and so then I mean obviously you became close through your junior year of track, junior year of track, and then that's only expanded from there. And then senior year we were in ASB. I was a, a, okay. ASB yes. senator, which okay. was like. Class president, but it was all weird. Okay. Anyway, I was an ASB. He yeah. was an ASB, and we were just. What did he do? He he, he was kind of I don't know I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Slap a title on it, dude. We were yeah we were just chilling. Love that. We would just chill in like this classroom. Yeah. With uh, shout out to Miss Finch. Miss Finch is amazing. Yes, Mrs. Finch. She uh, she's a great teacher. Love and, that. And like, just allowed us to be ourselves. And, yeah. Like when we needed to get things done, we got things yeah. done. But. For the most part, we weren't doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> not doing much. Not doing much. But um, it's good though. So then that obviously brought you, you know, I mean, he's is he a year older than you, or no. you're just you super young for your age. I'm super. I'm I'm I'm, super, I'm, I'm, I'm twenty. Grade. I'm twenty. Okay. So, I'm. A, did you did you graduate in twenty nineteen? Yeah. Oh, I, okay. So okay. same grade. Gotcha. Same, gotcha. Same, okay. Yeah, same okay. grade. Um. But yeah, you go to college and then. And then I came to Whitworth, yeah. and he, he was went like, to the falls. So we were like, we're kind of close. Yeah. So like 10, 15 minutes away. So yeah, we stayed in touch, and uh, we just grew a lot together because like he was my ride back home. Oh, sometimes sure. and yeah, like ride back. So um, you get to know a lot about a person in a three hour, you know, talk. Yeah, but you know, yeah, that's my boy. And you already knew him, so it's like, yeah, it's great. It's just yeah. great times with the fam. And he's like, he's been wanting to pursue modeling and yeah. all that stuff. So. so when he approached you with the idea that he wanted to be a model, mm-hmm. what do you say? I'm like, yeah, let's do it. I'll take pictures. Yeah. yeah. And then like, it just became like this thing, this duo, right? Yeah. So like, he was like the first video I did. Like Mario and Bert duo. Like video for yeah. videography. Yeah. Like my first reel, if you go back, like he's probably one of the first like, I don't know what you would call it, like clients, like no, like a reel that is just made for like showing off a person, like fashion kind of. Oh, showcase, like I, a I, showcase. I, yeah, I don't, I don't know what the ter- proper term is. Anyway, he was like one of the first like reels that I made about yeah. a person. Okay. And like all those flashy. similar to Sophia's. Yeah, kind of like Sophia's. Okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. so he was like the first video, and that was like, yeah, that was back like, in December. So yeah, seems about um, right. Um, but yeah, he. We were like, he was like, I want to take, I want to be a model. Yeah. And I was like, okay, well, I want to build my, portfol- <laughs> yeah. my portfolio a little bit more. So it just worked out. Mm-hmm. And so here, here, here's what really led me on to you as a, as a photographer. Cause I saw Bert and how good he looked. <laughs> <laughs> Not only because of the fashion, but I was like, bro, like these are good. Like these are not like you're like, Typical shots like these are these are like thought out, mm-hmm. you know the poses are great, which is probably also on behalf of him, and just like the crispness of it, mm. and I'm just like oh my god, I just fell in love with like what oh, I saw. Thank you, man. And I was just like bro, so like I saw the at and I'm like 
I'm following. I'm like, I'm Dude, following. I remember when you followed I, me. I need to get in contact with him. Cause I wanted to, I, so for me, I wanted to get more into like the scene of promoting myself in a way that was, you know, just like building up these little moments. I have an idea that I'm may or may not need your help with. All right. So uh, we, yeah, we, after, we, after the podcast, I'll we, talk we to you about talk, it. We yeah. Talk. We'll talk about it when we go get something to eat. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, beyond that, like I, I just saw it, man. I, and I followed you. I don't know if I reached out immediately, but I was like, bro, I'm like, I like it. I like what I see. Yeah. And so then we talked about doing something up in, in Lake Chelan. The timing just didn't work out. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, we're here now. Spokane's like my my place. Not yeah, my hometown, I, I, but it's my place. I live that way. Yeah. So. And, and like this is a 22-minute drive. Not too far. No, not too far. No. No. And like, dude, downtown, like Spokane, I've, I've been here my entire life. It's like it's like home to me. I'm from Bothell, Kirkland area, a little oh, north okay. of Seattle. Cool. I moved here when I was nine months. Ninety nine percent of my life, I've lived here mm-hmm. in this in this city, bro. It's it's home to me. You know, mm-hmm. as a YouTuber, as a creator, I want to make Spokane. I want to give it a name. Mm. I want to give it a name. You know. Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. like, how do you do that? You know, there's not many creative people in the YouTube space here. No. There is, they're not at a higher level. Which means that there's space for you. Exactly. There's exact, that exact thought runs through my mind every single day. It's like. Like well, you, you can be it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like LA has everybody. Yeah. New York has everybody. Yeah. Florida, wherever that is, has everybody. <laughs> Chicago has everybody. I think it's that way. I think, I think it's that way. <laughs> it's somewhere in these directions. Yeah. Every day, it's like, well, how do I put Spokane on the map other than it's housing market right now? <laughs> other than that, how do I make a name for this city? Mm. How do I do that? It's with the people around you. Yeah. It's exactly that. It's you know, like everyone talks you. about Leavenworth and it's, and it's Oktoberfest and it's Christmas lights. That's so true, man. It's That's... like, what is Spokane? What are you talking about Spokane for? Why do – ask yourself. If you were to ask somebody in, let's say, Georgia – what do you know about Spokane? What do you know it for? Mm. Nothing at this point. But one day that'll change. Mm. One day, you know? That'd be lit, dude. You know, you know, well, okay, actually, Gonzaga is here. So I, people yeah. may know it for that, but they may only know Gonzaga and not where it's from. So yeah, beyond yeah. that, yeah. The same idea holds. Like, how, what, do you, what do you know this for? What do you know Mario Gonzalez for? Yeah, like legacy, right? Exactly, bro. Mm-hmm. Legacy. It's all about what you're building and what you're doing today that will build you into this immortal name, this immortal figure mm-hmm. that people will always call back to. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. You know these people. We talk about Casey Neistat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he, Oh, he's an icon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How do we do that? Yeah. You know? That's interesting. Yeah. I, I, lo- I love that you said it's together or it's with the people you know. Yeah. Because that's, that's facts. Like, we're here to bring up each other. Exactly. So, And, bro, like, I mean, I wouldn't know you if it weren't for Bert. Mm-hmm. I'll never forget. Bert thought I was a dickhead. He thought I was a douche. <laughs> I, I said, like, the most outlandish thing. Like, I, bro, like, my friend Braden, I was like, I don't know. Like, going into college is a really weird place for me. It was like, I don't know what. I said some outlandish thing. I was like, why did I say that? And he just thought, I remember he told me like a month after, dude, I thought you were like a douche. Like when I first met you, I'm like, yeah. it's okay. I, yeah. I definitely came off like that. That's for like a hot second. And, oh, bro, Bert's my, Bert's more of your guy than he is my guy, but I love the man. Yeah, he's great. I could talk to him about like anything. He's great. And it was funny because when we were in Lake Chelan, so he came up to the podcast. Who is here? Oh, never mind. Never mind. My my sister's here. No, okay. I was like, who's pulling it up? I'm like, do we get a, more of an audience? <laughs> yeah, bring the whole. <laughs> I'm like, I only have one chair up here, so <laughs> the floor is yours. <laughs> but beyond that, I'm so Bert works at two places. He works at like a winery and then works, um, not like lifeguarding, but he works like. Uh, I think it was, uh, I forgot where he Mar- I don't, yes. Oh, uh, the marina. Was, yes, the marina. So. My family, they're big wine drinkers, beyond extended family. They're big wine drinkers, so they went to the winery. And it was after the podcast, so they had already met Bert. Mm. And my cousin Shawnee was like, like, you know, she recognized Bert, was like waving, and Bert's like, who the hell are you? Who are you? <laughs> and like, it was funny because she comes back, she's like, your friend was there. 
And I was like trying to put together because Julie had came up too. Oh. So I was thinking it was Julie. I'm like, why is she at the winery? Like, <laughs> that makes no sense. I thought she went home because she lives in Leavenworth. Yeah, yeah. And so that she's like, oh no, Bert. Bert was there. And I don't think he recognized us. I'm like, come on, Bert. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's funny. So I sent a, I sent a, uh, like a Snapchat to him. I'm like, bro, my fam was there. Do you see him? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, No, <laughs> no, 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 I did not. <laughs> so funny. Uh, that's funny. But, um, he, he had mentioned, um, we, we got really close, like throughout that talk. I didn't even know he was in a wheelchair for three months, you know, was yeah. that like the verge of just like, ah, yeah, he, he went through it also. Yeah. yeah. And then like right after, you know, you guys, it was, it was got during close. quarantine. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, how are you going to know? I always saw him in the hospital bed. I'm yeah. like, I, you know, I hope he's okay. I don't really know. But he had mentioned, uh, you know, like your story, you know, like the whole podcast is building a story. It's building, you know, this, this, you know, quote unquote legacy, you know, it's your story. Mm -hmm. It's all about stories. And he had mentioned, um, I, th I believe it was your mom. Yeah. It, correct me if I'm wrong, who had passed away. Yeah. I don't know. Do you want to talk on that? Like how yeah. that impacted you? I can totally talk about it. I, yeah. It's like, uh, yeah, we can totally get yeah. into it. So, so when did you lose your mom? So I was uh, I was thirteen when okay. I lost my mom, um, and she she died from a stroke. Okay, so, um, I can I can I can go. Yeah, dude, just story. go. Yeah, dude, I love it because I don't know how to like prep the question no, for no, it. No, so no. yeah, it's okay. I mean, I imagine you've told the story to to I, people before. So I, I've told the story so many times. Yeah. So, so um, yeah, the mic is yours. Um. So I lost my mom when she, uh, at thirteen years old. I was thirteen. Um. And if I'm being honest, I was not a great kid. Like, sure. um, growing up, I was, like, around, like, bad people, drugs, like, I, and I was little. Like, yeah. I was 11 years old, man. Like, I was 11 years old, like, smoking weed and, like, drinking and yeah. breaking into houses, stealing stuff. Not like, a great crowd. I was, yeah. So, um, anyway, and my parents were always working, like, my dad's still working. Like yeah. my dad's a hard, like the hardworking. Yeah. Like he is the man I look up to. Yeah. Like he's amazing. Man of God. Like he he knows how to work. Yeah. And um he's kind of my inspiration. He's my inspiration. Yeah. Um so anyway, um parents always working and uh there's a time like seventh grade when I moved to Chelan. The reason I moved to Chelan is because my sister lived in Chelan, and my parents were like, "Hey, like, it's there's no there's no work for us. Yeah, better like, opportunity. There's better opportunity for, yeah. in California. So, and I was like, I don't want to go. And they were like, w What do you mean you don't want to go? I was <laughs> like, I, I don't want to go to California. So I was very stubborn. I still am very stubborn. Sure, I'm a very stubborn person. Um, but I was like, I don't want to go. And they were like, Okay, well, you're gonna stay with your sister. And I was like, Okay, bet. How how much older is she to you? She if you're 13, is 12 at this time. Yeah, 13 at this she's time. She's like, I think she was like 30. Okay, wow. She was, yeah, so that also kind of tells like how 20, old Like 20, 28. Okay, how so, old your some, parents are? Yeah, something 12. around there. Yeah. yeah, so my parents are old. Um, sure. But, um, yeah, they, they were like, you're going to stay with your sister. And I was like, okay, well, might as well. And yeah. um, moving into Chelan, like, I knew some people. Just because I was like I was a hood rat, so I was always in Chelan. Sure. And like I met some people, but it wasn't like close relationships or yeah. anything. Like I was still the new student. Yeah. Um, and I'd never experienced that, and it was weird. Yeah, like, it's. Yeah. I was going through this phase that, like I had earrings and like, <laughs> like a chain, like the like the swag days, you know, <laughs> yeah, like the yeah, yeah, yeah. That was me. <laughs> that, I was that kid with like piercings and like the bull hat, like Chicago oh, bull yeah. hat, <laughs> and like I was that kid. So. People didn't really like me, or didn't to see him now. Like I would have, <laughs> like I would have never guessed. Yeah, so people didn't really like me. Sure. So it was it was really hard for me to make friends, but I still had a group of friends that were yeah. like, I would hang out at this place called the Teen Center, and like okay. that was like the spot to go to. Sure. Um, and I love the Teen Center, and like that has a big heart, like place yeah. in my heart. Um, anyway, so when I moved to uh, Chelan. Like a year later, in my eighth grade year, my parents decided to come back. Okay. And the house that I was living in, now my my brother moved in. 
My okay. sister moved out and moved to Pasco down in the Tri-Cities, yeah. and my parents moved there. Okay. So I haven't lived with my parents since seventh grade. Like, oh, wow. I Yeah, so I had I had been with my brother, um, and that just gave me more freedom, right? Yeah. So I was like, I was always out and about. Yeah. Um, There's nobody keeping you, like, like be I, home at nine. Yeah, you know? so, well, like, my parents cared about me and, like, called yeah. me all the time. Yeah. And th- that was the reason why I always got a phone. Like, I had a phone early, so. Sure. Just because. Yeah, that I, communication. I, yeah, I stayed at home. I stayed alone, like, home alone a lot. Um, but that eighth grade year, um, it was like, it's actually, uh, around September. Um, I like, I was coming home from like a weekend or something. Yeah. Like I was out about, and I, I, I lived in by the airport. So yeah, I had to go like every time I went to the back home, I didn't have a signal at my house. Mm-hmm. So I had to like, I plugged in my phone and like put like, Put my phone up to the window, the window seal, yeah, to get signal, yeah. And I was like scrolling through like Facebook or something, or like Snapchat, and I get a call from my mom, and she's like, "Hey, like, what's up? Like, wh- what have you been up to? Like, have you ate?" And like, she would always ask the normal, me. Yeah. the normal conversation. Yeah, like, she yeah. she was like caring about me, and yeah. like, "Hey, like, are you okay?" Yeah, and I was like, "I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I'm, I'm good. I'm like just trying to get some signal here." Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um. And I hung up the phone. Everything was fine. And then, like, five minutes, like, I'm sc- scrolling through, and, like, I get a call again, like, f- like five minutes later. Yeah. Not, it, it was a little bit of time. And it's from my mom's phone, but my sister. Okay. And she's like, hey, um, mom's not doing so good. And I was like, I, I just talked to her. Like, literally was just talking yeah. to her. And she's like, get, like, Call your brother and tell him that we're all headed to Seattle because she's she's like she's going to Harvard View. And I was like, Oh wow! I was like, What? Yeah, that's not a light hospital either. No, no, like, yeah. And so I hung up the phone. As soon as I like hung up the phone, man, like just tears. Yeah. Like, what's running through your mind at that point? Like, I was like, what? I mean, the, it's the only information you know at that point is that she's not doing well. You're flying. Or you're yeah, going. That I'm going. That I'm yeah. leaving. Like, we have to get our stuff. Yeah. So like, I literally like, I like went back and I was like, a just like a big tear. That's like yeah, the only just thing, like the, the biggest tears tear. in my like whole life. Yeah. Um. And then my sister, my sister in law came and she was like, "What's wrong?" And then I, I told her like, "My mom's not doing good. Like, we all have to go." I don't even know how I communicated this because I was crying. <laughs> yeah. So. And like from that moment on, it's kind of like a blur. Like we yeah. got stuck in traffic and like. Sure. When we got to the hospital, like, she was laying there, and um, we all kind of got to see her, and then, like, we got pulled over. We got, I mean, we got pulled to the side and were put in a conference room, and yeah. they were like, we're going to give you two options. Like, as a whole family, we were yeah. together, and the, the doctor was like, we have two options. Like, you can keep her alive, but she, like, has to relearn everything, absolutely mm-hmm. everything. Um, she had a stroke, so yeah. she's brain dead. Yeah. Um, or um, you can pull the plug. And um, I think at that moment, we all knew that we didn't want her to suffer no longer. Yeah. Um, and that happens. And uh, I would I would be lying if I said I cried. I didn't. Yeah. And for a long time, I didn't. On that day, after that happened, I remember this vividly. I uh, I called. I think I called like the, my girlfriend at the time, and I was like, "This is this is just what happened." And I there's a balcony, um, at the hospital, and I walked out of the balcony, and I like, I just looked up, and like there's like a building here, a building here, and like the lights in the city, and like I walked out to the balcony, and I was like. From this moment on, from like today on, I am gonna be the best version of myself I can possibly be. I am gonna do everything, everything, everything I possibly can to make my mom proud, and nothing's gonna stop me. And I'm gonna be the best version of myself. 
And from that moment on, like that, that moment has like completely changed my life. No more Chicago Bulls hats. No, no more, more chains. Chicago, no more piercings. No, no more piercings and like just a whole revamp, like a remodeling of your life. Mm-hmm. So that moment is very significant, and it almost sounds like a movie. It, but <laughs> yeah, it quite frankly does. <laughs> but it's it's real. It's wow. like I have those coordinates in my phone. I have that time. I have that date. Um, so my mom passed away. I she was declared dead or deceased mm. at um, September twenty ninth, two thousand fourteen. So I. I say to September twenty eighth, two thousand fourteen, just because that was the last time I talked to her. Yeah, that's like, um, so those two days are a little, a little rough. Yeah. So uh, it's it's yeah. We're about a like an eleven week out. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, So from that moment on, like going that eighth grade year sucked. I like still kind of trying to get myself together. Yeah. Um but that that changed the whole dynamic of my family. Like my mom was the anchor. Yeah. My mom was the one that got everyone together and brought the whole family together. And when she left, we all did. So, it was really hard to come together as a family. Mm. Um and um that's how it's been. Like I I don't I don't have Personally, like, it sucks, but I have done such a good job of pushing my family away mm. um, where it's, like, I don't know where I'm going home for Christmas, to be honest. Yeah. I don't know where I'm going home for Thanksgiving. I, like, I'd never really had that Yeah, since that moment. So. Um, Do you still keep in touch at all, or? Yeah, like, like I, my dad, like. I talked to my dad. Yeah. My dad I love my dad. But um yeah, it's uh it's changed a lot. Like yeah, so I'm not really like I I was living with my brother until like 2 months ago. Okay. And uh I decided to move out like it sure. was just like I felt like a burden and I just I couldn't do it. Like I was like I think I felt like I was putting a strain in the relationship sure. and like my sister-in-law and my brother like, the relationship, and I was like, I just can't do it. Like, I need to leave, so I left. And I lived in my car for a couple days. Sure. But thankfully, like, I had good people around me, and um, I knew that I was going to move. I was going to come back here. Um, But that wasn't the case. Like, I, there's, <laughs> there was a couple times during yeah. quarantine where I was like, I'm dropping out. Yeah. But thankfully, like, God's good. I'm back. But... Yeah, losing my mom has been, um, yeah, it's, it, it, it changed my whole life. Well, it changed the trajectory, you know, like, I mean, even for you to mention that you, you know, had done things that you're not proud of at a younger age, at the age of 11, like you mentioned, and to be around a crowd that you're not so fond of now, you know, because you look back at it. I mean, at the time, you're probably like, yeah, like, this is a livelihood, but, you know, as they, as they say, you know, if you want to change your life, something drastic has to change in you, mm-hmm. something along those lines. It it feels so odd that in a way that it happened so personally, but not you personally. Mm. Yeah. It happened with your, your mom. Yeah. Um, but like, like I met... I, 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 I met, like, I grew up religious, but yeah. I met God again my junior year. And, like, looking back at my life, like, he's been there. Um, every moment since? Every moment. Every moment from, like, the day I was born, like, yeah, he's been there. And he's been, he, he continues to be there. Just strengthened after the fourth concussion, though. Yeah. Just after that fourth concussion, he's back in. Yeah. Back in full gear. Yeah. So and it's only been it's, up yeah. Sin- since. Yeah. That's awesome. So... Dude, that that's a roller coaster. <laughs> I mean, like uh, Bert had mentioned, like the story, but it's just like so, like it's like a blockbuster. It's like, <laughs> yeah, like you go from like 
one universe to another in five minutes. Yeah. And like I, I'm I'm continuing like even like looking back at this last year, like it's changed significantly yeah. like into the roles that I've yeah. been in and like it's what you've invested your time with. Coming into like only seven seconds and like yeah. being part of this university that like I'm doing cam- I'm a campus ministry coordinator. Okay. So I'm yeah. I'm doing ministry yeah. inside the dorms and like trying to disciple and like be yeah. be someone of God that people can look up to and um like trust. Yeah. So yeah, I mean like <laughs> Yeah, I mean that trajectory is I mean drastically different. I mean I love a you know, a comeback story like that. Yeah. But yours for me tops the list. Like <laughs> I, I've seen so many people throughout my high school days and other people that I've known who have taken the other route or, you know, good and then bad. Mm-hmm. But I mean, just to hear how like, like again, from five minutes to a, a two days a day, just change your life completely. Mm-hmm. You know, again, that cliche, you know, mm-hmm. it's just like, if you want to change yourself, something drastic has to change in you. Mm-hmm. It, like, again, it, it feels so personally mm-hmm. like a, a personal thing, but it just happened to be with the passing of your mom, yeah. you know? And so for you to say, you know, like everything that you do is for her. I mean, it, it truly seems like it is, mm-hmm. you know? Like every single day, you know, you're not with your mom, but you are with your mom mm. in a way. Yeah. So, like, wow. yeah. It's a lot to take in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for the most part, um, I've been kind of like, I'm very independent. I'm yeah. very Yeah, independent I, it person. seems like you have since a young age. Yeah, so, like, I just, like, carry myself as an independent person. I was, yeah. like... I have a very big ego. I have, like, I'm very proud of my, like, you, self. You should and, be. Like, I, sometimes it can bite me in the butt, like. Sure. But, um, yeah, I was telling Sophia, like, it's, I, I, d- I do have these, per- like, flaws in me. Yeah. But that's just because, like, I've been through it. I've, like, there, there's a little bit of pride that I carry. Yeah. Of what I've been through. And, yeah. Well, um, I mean, dude, every everyone's, you know, gone through hardship. Like, Mm -hmm. no matter how hard it has been, you know, you should still be, you know, proud of where you've come from, Mm -hmm. you know. Like, yeah, I've dealt with my own thoughts being in a a bad state. Mm -hmm. I've dealt with people that have said bad things about things like this or my creative side. But I'm still here. Yeah. You know, like, why should it matter what they think or what they thought back then when I'm here now? Yeah. You know, and like I said, like, no matter how many hardships how what the magnitude of each hard, hardship is you still gone through it yeah you should be proud of yourself you know yeah. and nobody should tell you otherwise they don't know what you've gone through yeah. they don't know what you've experienced you know unless you physically told them i bet <laughs> i bet you for most people that would be you know in in agging you about like bro like why are you like that mm-hmm. i bet you if you told them exactly what you just told me they would bro like they treat you like they're best friends. Yeah. It's it's insane, you know? I think there's a lot of... Another conversation beyond that of just, like, you know, just learning people's stories. And like you said, with, like, the only seven seconds, that connection. You know, you've been on the other end of that, mm-hmm. so you understand that. I've been on both sides, so... Yeah. And so, dude, that it's so awesome just to see, you know, how that's transformed you, mm-hmm. you know? And so you mentioned, obviously, the ministry work at, at Whitworth. Mm-hmm. How did you get into that, and what's what's that related to your studies? Um, so I I actually don't have any kind of like theology, like sure, like I'm not going into that field. At least that's okay. what it yeah. looks like right now. No, no, for sure. Um, but it's just a part of what you're doing at college. Yeah, but um, last year, like two years ago, I decided to be um, the intern for my youth. Oh, my youth, yeah, youth leader. Group. Yeah. yeah. Um, his name's Graham, and he he was actually the reason why I'm like at Whitworth. Like, shout out Graham. Yeah, shout out Graham. That's my boy. <laughs> it, that's my boy. Also, like he, I love that guy. Um, but he uh, he's like, I well, Whitworth just kind of fell in my lap my senior year, like because it's an expensive school. Yeah, so I'm not light financially. I'm like, I'm very thankful, like, of the scholarships that I have, yeah. and like, um. I'm the first person in my family to ever graduate from high school. Wow. Um, 
and like pursue this yeah this thing secondary the education. secondary education yeah. like i'm i'm the first one in my wow. family um so coming into like a university you're like i'm scared like i was really yeah. scared yeah um but i thankfully i worked my butt off um in high school yeah to provide for my education now, now yeah um and a lot, a lot of times, like my my family didn't see that. Like they were like, "Why aren't you working? Like, why aren't you going to like the fields and or like the packing shed?" Or why that's don't all you, that they why, know. Why don't you Why don't you find yeah. a real job? And uh, I was like, "I'm doing this because it matters, and because I can get a scholarship from this." Yeah. And at the end of my senior year, I I had six I I had about six thousand sixty thousand dollars in scholarships. <laughs> Whitworth is only like 50, 40, yeah, forty two thousand. Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. At the wow. time, at that time, yeah, it was only forty two thousand. Wow. So year and a half worth of, yeah. So, I I don't know how God like provided that second year. I don't even know how He <laughs> provided this year. Yeah. Like to be honest, like I'm still like, wow. what? Yeah. But that's all. We trust that. So, um. So Graham, he like he's the one that brought me to school. Okay. Like, yeah. He, he was literally like, <laughs> "Here it is. <laughs> like, here it is. Like, he, he, here's your stuff. Here's your room." He like took me to lunch, brought me back. You're free. <laughs> he gave me a what? Bible and like wrote some kind words and yeah. Like, but I decided to be his um his intern. Okay. And um, uh, and that's kind of how. I kind of fell into like some kind of ministry for the y- first time. Yeah. Um, so like helping with like high school students and um, going on a mission trip and doing just like intern stuff. Yeah. Um, so I've been doing that for, I did that for two years and like, okay. so I did it this last year and wow. um, I, I kind of like, I fell in love with God even more when yeah. I came to Whitworth. Like there's just like this thing at Whitworth that like it's like you walk in, you, like you <laughs> yeah. li- you literally walk on campus and you feel a presence that you've never felt before like sure it was like it's that um and I like I it's funny because I applied for this job at the end of my freshman year and I got it oh okay for uh, college obviously yeah for college and I applied for an RA job and a CMC job okay residence assi- uh, assistant yeah. or something yeah RA. so yeah I got both of those jobs, and okay. then during that quarantine and, like, that summer of, like, COVID. Yeah, where there's nothing going on. Um, I had to pick. I was like, do I want to be a CMC or do I want to be an RA? And I picked the CMC job, and uh, I was like, money will provide. Like, money's yeah. going to be. Yeah. Like, I'd rather be doing something I you like. Love, and then yeah. the money later. Yeah. So, uh, unfortunately, I didn't come back. For oh. last year, like I was oh, all online. Oh, oh, gotcha. That makes sense. I was online. <laughs> yeah, I was like thinking. I was like, why didn't you go back? I'm like, um, let's dive into that. Yeah. I realized, yeah. So, COVID. Yeah, COVID kind of like messed everything up, and like I stayed home. But that was like a blessing in disguise because like I, I got to be, like I got to shoot with brands. I got to shoot with only seven yeah. seconds. I get it, like shoot for my myself, my business. Yeah. Um, and uh, now, this last summer, like. I was doing ministry and then I left for a mission trip and then like literally on my way back coming back here. Yeah. I get a text and they're like, Hey, um, we need, a like a CMC. And I was like, I, <laughs> I said, yes. Yeah. I said yes on the plane. Didn't think about it. Like I got a text ne- the next day and they're like, okay, I'm so, we're so excited. And I was like, hold on, let me think about it. And, uh, I thought about it and then, like she called me my my boss yeah. Lauren and um she was like do you want this job and then I was like I really need to think about it so I like thought about it and I was like okay I'm going to step into this role and uh yeah now I have and it's it's going to be a journey and like I'm wow. I'm learning and growing as I do this wow so you've been doing it for uh a week and a half 
Okay, so, so wow, yeah, because oh, you got back from New Orleans. Is that when like yeah, the, I, I went okay. to I went to do okay, I, yeah. I I did a mission down in New Orleans. Okay, and then then church. you got the call. And, yeah. It's, okay, so this is like really recent. I was thinking this was like spring still. No, this is like recent. <laughs> oh my god! So, so literally, oh, wow. So I've been here for like three weeks. I, yeah, I, I had to come here early. Like I left August twenty sixth. That something seems like about that. right. Yeah. So I left to come here, and then. Like literally got here, <laughs> left the next day to train for training yeah. for three days and yeah. then like trained for a whole week. Oh my god. And uh, that like flew. And then yeah. So it was uh <laughs> it was really it was really it was like so much wow in that little like, short amount of time. Wait, have you guys started school yet? Yeah, we started school. Oh so this is <laughs> this is literally the end of like this is the first week. Yeah, this is like the September. first full week of school. Oh my god, wow. Um <laughs> yeah. So, I, I I was here early, so yeah. doing training and like everything. So it's been, I've been here for three months. Yeah, I mean, I not three months. I've I've been here for like three. <laughs> so that seems around. Yeah, it, like, it seems like three yeah. months. I've been here for like three weeks or yeah. like two, uh, <laughs> like two weeks and a half or something sure. like that. Um, but yeah, it's wow. Uh, it, 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 it's been a lot. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So like Dude, I literally. That is- Literally from like working at home and then like coming back. Yeah, like I've been nonstop just for a, a while, and it's all been a part of like this journey that you've been able to, you know, to to capture. You know, yeah, yeah. you know, you're here to capture God's creation, as you said. Yeah, so and it's just just a part of that. Yeah, so right now I am uh, at school. I am the CMC, and then I work for. Well, they're technical classes. Sure. So I I shoot for the newspaper and I shoot for oh. the yearbook. Um, kind of seems like a good field to be in. Yeah. You know, so, <laughs> so and like I'm a communications major with oh, okay. a, vi- a minor in visual communications. That makes so, sense. Um, wow. We'll see what that takes me, but yeah. the visual communications is basically for me to just be more focused on like the visual and photography side, so, of, yeah. Instead of, of like everything, newspaper articles, yeah. Stuff instead like that. of writing, I would rather journalism. Like, yeah, yeah. So I love journalism, photography, but I don't want to write about journalism, photography. Yeah. I just want to show you. I don't want to write about it. Um, so it's a good way. Of, it's a good way of saying it, kindly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's I want to show you the pictures, but I don't want to tell you because there's all that like yeah. iffy poli- pol- political, political stuff. I, yeah. I, yeah. So, um, so that's my major, and so I'm kind of busy, but yeah, kind of not. It's weird. Kind of not. I mean, you made you're here, so yeah, <laughs> I appreciate it. So after this, I'm yeah. I'm gonna go take pictures for uh, volleyball. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> this guy! <laughs> and it was funny because I missed him in Lake Chelan because of how busy he was. <laughs> Goodness sakes! Yeah, I, I was a busy actually, guy. We were together when uh, you texted me I in Lake Chelan. No. Uh, like yesterday? Oh, yeah. When was it when you texted me? It was probably to, last night. Yeah, yesterday, last night. No, 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 no. Like to meet. Oh, today. and like it was like the beginning of the week. This oh week yeah, yeah. When you texted me, yeah. and like I was like, that makes sense. Commit. We I just like committed to Friday because like yeah. Friday. I only yeah, have, Friday and then work around. I only it, have one class on Friday, sure. so I was like, it works. Yeah. So. Um, it worked well. For oh, me even too. though even <laughs> even though we did reschedule, like yeah, I said five, and then I was like, oh wait, let's do three thirty. I, I could care less. Yeah, <laughs> any time works for me. <laughs> we did like Casey up there. We did his at like eight a.m. Oh really? Yeah, most everyone's at noon. I usually schedule them for noon. I think Samson was like a five thirty. Everyone else has been at noon. Nice. I just yeah. say noon, <laughs> and I'm like, and we go get lunch after. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Sense, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, dude, that's insane. A busy guy, you know, and obviously have been through a lot throughout. Your entire life, yeah. you know. I'm only 20. I know. <laughs> That's like. <laughs> I'm only 20. I feel like I'm 32. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. I love it. I love it. But that is still there. You're you're free to pop it whenever. I'll I'll do it when it's you know when it when it feels right when it feels right. I get it. Yeah. I want to ask could. you one final question though. Okay. Who is Mario A. Gonzalez. Uh, you you asked this to Bert. You asked this. To I everyone. did. Uh, man, I'm just a guy behind a camera, or I'm a guy 
that loves God, loves Jesus, and loves my camera. And I'm here to be kind and serve others and love a, love them well. Um, and that's that's it. Like that's all I'm here to do. Keep it simple. Keep it simple, stupid. That's what I've been stupid telling. Stupid, simple. Me. Keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it simple, <laughs> stupid, and simple, stupid. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, I love that man. Just yeah, I uh, yeah. There's a lot of things I love and I'll, and like a lot of things I'm passionate about, and that's that's what makes me me. Um, I love music. I love, I love shoes. I love clothing. I love my Apple products. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I, I I mainly saw that for her to roll her <laughs> eyes. I'm like an Apple fanboy. Yeah. Like, but I, like the things I love are the reason that I like, I am who I am. And yeah. Dude, that's awesome, man. Dude, episode 16. <laughs> yes. Wait, yes. Wait, wait, Pop wait, wait. it. It's going to turn. It's going to go. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I, I don't even care about cleaning this up. I'm going to keep you here the entire time. Oh, dude. Yeah. Pleasure having you on, dude. I'm so excited to... I'm excited to post this episode. This is a great great episode. I'm excited to see this. Oh, my God. Episode 16 of the Realist Podcast. (laughs) Thank you, Right there. Remember to go check out Mario on Instagram, and I'll leave all his socials down in the description below. I appreciate it, dude. Make sure to go follow him. Send him some love. (laughs) The Nationers, I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching episode 16 of the Realist Podcast. Banner right there. Hit that subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Have a good one. Peace. Peace!